This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca Dittman, Liverpool, United Kingdom. Web address mercurialspirit.co.uk From October to Brest-Litovsk by Leon Trotsky Chapter 27 Conclusion When our party took over the government, we knew in advance what differences we had to contend with. Economically, the country had been exhausted by the war to the very utmost. The revolution had destroyed the old administrative machinery and could not yet create anything to take its place. Millions of workers had been wrested from their normal nooks in the national economy of things, declassified and physically shattered by the Three Years' War. The colossal war industries, carried on on an inadequately prepared national foundation, had drained all the lifeblood of the people, and their demobilization was attended with extreme difficulties. The phenomena of economic and political anarchy spread throughout the country. The Russian peasantry had for centuries been held together by barbarian national discipline from below and iron czarist rule from above. Economic development had undermined the former. The revolution destroyed the latter. Psychologically, the revolution meant the awakening of a sense of human personality amongst the peasantry. The anarchic manifestations of this awakening are but the inevitable result of the preceding oppression. A new order of things, an order based on the worker's own control of industry, can come only through gradual and internal elimination of the anarchic manifestations of the revolution. On the other hand, the propertied classes, even though deprived of political power, will not relinquish their advantage without a fight. The revolution has brought to a head the question of private property in land and the tools of production, that is, the question of vital significance to the exploiting classes. Politically, this means ceaseless, secret or open civil war. In its turn, civil war inevitably nourishes anarchical tendencies within the working men's movement. With the disorganization of industries, of national finances, of the transportation and provisioning systems, prolonged civil strife thus sets up tremendous difficulties in the way of constructive organizing work. Nevertheless, the Soviet government can look the future in the face with perfect confidence. Only a careful inventory of all the country's resources, only a rational organization of industries, the organization born of one general plan, only wise and careful distribution of all the products can save the country. And this is socialism, either a complete descent to colonial status or a socialist resurrection. These are the alternatives before which our country finds itself. The war has undermined the soil of the entire capitalistic world. Herein lies our unconquerable strength. The imperialistic ring that is pressing around us will lie burst asunder by the proletarian revolution. We do not doubt this for a minute, any more than we doubted during our decades of underground struggle the inevitableness of the downfall of Tsarism. To struggle, to unite our forces, to establish industrial discipline and a socialist regime, to increase the productivity of labor and to press on in the face of all obstacles, this is our mission. History is working in our favor. The proletarian revolution will flare up sooner or later, both in Europe and America, and will bring emancipation not only of the Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, Courland and Finland, but also to all suffering humanity. End of chapter 27 End of From October to Brest-Litovsk